Talk, talk to me about the affidavit thing. You know, the, it's not it's been every one of every Republican in the same way as they first were on the the the, the FBI or is the Gestapo, the Stasi, the whatever, all of that. You know, they're they're totalitarians. That was their line last week. Uh, then it was definitely planted, definitely planted. That was the chorus. Now the chorus is released the affidavit. Uh, talk to me about why. That's uh, a ludicrous position well, on, the, on the merits. It's a ludicrous position on the merits because it would be, as the government put in its brief, a roadmap to the entire investigation. It would basically tell you what the case is. And they're not required to reveal their case to the potential criminal defendants. That's not how this works. <laughs> and it just doesn't happen. And I, that's actually the reason why all these people are saying we, we must have the affidavit because they, they know it's not going to happen. Right. It's, just, it's just nothing. It's asking, asking for ice in winter. I mean, it's just not, you're not going to, I mean, no, you should get ice in winter, but <laughs> Dude, <that's laughs> wrong, wrong metaphor. That's, that's but yeah, you, you, you just, he just, they're just asking for it so they can create an issue out of nothing. And, and we've talked about it the last couple of days in the show. And I, I, you know, it's an important thing that's happening and we need to, it's going to be argued in court. And we're going to get, you know, you can never completely assume a foregone conclusion it leaves a lot of hostages to fortune if you do that. But it, it is right, essentially, that it would be a stunning result you know, nearly unprecedented result if the judge were to rule to release this affidavit. Oh, the government would go bananas. I mean, the government government would take it up to the to the to the, to the circuit court almost immediately. And, and there's just it's just not going to happen. And it's not going to happen because um, you know, that the law doesn't allow it to happen. There's, there's grand jury secrecy rules. I mean, this is just nothing. There's just he has no entitlement to it. And beyond that, they have a particularly strong case. And in addition to, you know, they have all this boilerplate language from the, the cases where that, all these other cases where the where the motions like this are denied. But this is a guy who has a history of obstructing justice. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have multiple, multiple uh, uh, description, uh, multiple occasions on the, in, the, in the second volume of the Mueller report when he was obstructing justice. Yeah. And we, he's, he's, he's been doing it right up to the present day with the January 6th witnesses, you know, try, calling up some dude, at the, you know, some former sort low level person at the White House. And, and, and I'd say more. And, I'd say more than a history. It's like a, propen- a propensity, a, pro- a, procl- a, procl- a proclivity. Yes. Um, it's like almost a hobby a, 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 for him. A hobby. Um, yes, um, well. But here's. But here's the profession. thing. If I yeah. If I remember correctly, as I was reading this thing from the Washington Post, where it's about like all the lawyers they're trying to get, the high powered lawyers, the good lawyers, all of them saying no. Yeah. If I if my memory serves, there was a time once upon a time at the beginning of the administration when Donald Trump wanted George Conway. To be a lawyer, not for him personally. No, but but to, well, to, he but, would have viewed me as a personal lawyer. Well, of because, course, because everybody, because everybody works for him. But he was talking about Solicitor right. General of the United States, if I remember correctly. And, and I, the one I was really going to be considered for was um, Assistant Attorney General for the Civil Division, which okay. is actually the yeah. world's biggest law firm. It's right. really, it's a great job. And you said, and you said no. You took no. yourself out of consideration. Right. I'm asking you this not to rehearse old history, except to like. Yeah, you were, as I mentioned before, a very high-powered lawyer with a with a huge career as a litigator in this town. What was it that made you think at that point in early 2017, like, I don't want to be part of this? Um, I basically came to the conclusion there's something very seriously wrong with this guy. And I couldn't quite put it on, you know, I I, I figured it out later that he was just plain lunatic. But, you know, I just I I mean, I saw what he was doing with, uh, you know, firing Mueller and then and then and then going out on television and saying, uh, talking about I did it because of Russia. I mean, there's there was a screw loose there. And I was wondering, like, how big is that screw? And, and, you know, (laughs) and and when he when he appointed when 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 Rod Rosenstein appointed uh, uh, Mueller to be a special counsel, I just realized, you know, this guy's going to be at war with the Justice Department for years and I'm going to be at the Justice Department. Forget about it. But this is why when I read a story like that. I know you have to write these things in English. So you say Trump's divisiveness and his uh, propensity to not take advice or to stiff clients. That's what you write for the Washington Post. And all of that's true. Yeah. But I would think if you were a high class uh, lawyer, the kind of lawyer that Trump would want to defend himself in this case, that most of those people would not. Those are like almost pedestrian reasons to not want to be a part of this. Now, what you've seen over the last five years is a, a, a serious person, a serious lawyer, wouldn't touch this client with a barge Absolutely. pole. He, he actually consulted me after I withdrew from a consideration to be an assistant attorney general, he actually had a, had a call in my office two blocks away um, from the White House, from the president, with about 10 people with him, Vice President Pence, Jared, um, who was the chief of staff then, uh, Reince, and, uh, and, the, and a whole bunch of people. And, and he was going through the names of prominent 
American lawyers from major law firms in the United States whom he was considering um, hiring. And, you know, none of them wanted to have anything to do with him. And I was, and I was giving them pros and cons for all these, but it was all, it was all a mindless exercise because none of these people, none of these law firms want to have anything to do with them. Now, now there are some lawyers who do want to have something to do with them. And I want to bring in Carol Lee in a second. Um, actually, bring her in now. MSC News correspondent Carol Lee. Carol, um, it's good to see you. Um, I want to, I want to get both of you guys to talk about this because we've met some new, Me n some new lawyers, uh, in this, in the look over the last eight days. And we've just talked about how all the really good ones don't want to work for him. So here's, uh, I want to play this because it goes right to the news of day here. One of those lawyers that we see now, there's that woman, Miss Bob, who we see sometimes. And now there's also this woman named Miss Haba, Alina Haba, who was on Newsmax yesterday. And she, she basically made a demand what Donald Trump wants from the Justice Department. Let's play that sound and we'll talk about it. The president's position, the same as what I would advise him, is to ask them to uncover everything so that we can see what is going on. I understand the witness protection issue, but at the same time, these witnesses are truly not going to be um, concealed for very long. That's just not the nature of the DOJ and the FBI. And unfortunately, our country, there's always leaks. You know, I, I've dealt with that even with, um, you know, local law enforcement. There's leaks when there shouldn't be. So I think it's in the best interest so that the com country can get comfortable to see what the basis was, especially from somebody who is cooperating, yeah. who was working with them, with his attorneys. Um, this is not a, a reason to be blindsided. Carol, uh, George used a phrase a little while, a few minutes ago that was like, that's not how this works. I would say that uh, the demand that the government reveal the witnesses uh, that it used to uh, justify getting the search warrant. That's another one of those. Yeah. That's not how this works kind of things. Right. Um, it, how is it going in Trump world with mm -hmm. these kinds of attorneys making claims on television that even if you're a partisan, a pro Trump partisan, you have to wonder, is the president really well represented by some of these people? Well, look, I think. There's always these two tracks with pre former President Trump. We saw this during impeachment and other legal troubles that he had during the Mueller investigation, where you have a set of lawyers who are working for him that are focused perhaps on the substance of that. And then you have this overlap with what is really a PR campaign. And so part of what you see the president, former president's team trying to do here is to do this public facing sort of PR stunt, if you will, or to try to c continue to, what in their view, feel is a win public opinion. And by public opinion, I mean Trump supporters. They feel that this is a very good issue for the president, former president, that it's elevated him, that it reminds his supporters that he's a around because he's not really that visible, hasn't been, has not on Twitter. As, we've, as people have noted, he's been on television a lot less. So it reminds them of that, that he's there and also of why he ran in the first place and why they liked him. They like seeing him. And, and when I talk to people in Trump world, that the, his supporters really like seeing him in a fight. So when you see a clip like that and you hear for these calls for things that any lawyer knows is not going to happen, that's not how investigations work, that's part of the fight. That's the public fight. Uh, right. The question is, who are the lawyers around the president who are focused on the substance? Well, or are there any? Here's uh, here what I, I want to read a little more from this Washington Post story uh, where it talks about this issue. Trump is rushing to hire seasoned lawyers. This piece says it's got Carol Letting, Jackie Alamany, Josh Dossie, a whole bunch of, uh, of, of bylines on this story. It says he's rushing to hire these seasoned lawyers. Here's an here's a story. One lawyer told a story from early in Trump's presidency of his legal team urging him against tweeting about the Mueller probe, only to find he'd tweeted about it before they got to the end of the West Wing driveway. Uh, several people said Trump was nearly impossible to represent and that it would be unclear if they would ever get paid. Now, um, it is you have written that this this investigation, George, uh, represents the shortest distance between Donald Trump and an orange jumpsuit, correct? I said it. So the most serious, so the most, Ridner said, same thing okay. in our world, in, the, in this world, in this courtroom, both are admissible. That's not true. Um, so this is like the most serious legal jeopardy he's ever been in. Yes. Correct. Okay. So the lawyers, uh, again, I go back to Miss Alina Haba, uh, whose, uh, whose professional experience includes serving as a general counsel to a parking, parking garage yeah. company. 
Uh, she started representing Trump last year in a number of cases, including the E. Jean Carroll defamation suit. Uh, she was sued last month by a black former legal assistant who claims that she was tormented by her boss loudly and repeatedly singing the N-word while listening to rap. The lawsuit alleges that Haba uh, lost her cool uh, about Letitia James and angrily shouted, quote, I hate that black B-word. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's Ms. Haba. Um, then Christina Bob, who we just talked about before, former OA and an anchor, uh, whose prior legal experience at the federal level consists mainly of a handful of trademark infringement cases on behalf of CrossFit during a stint in a San Diego law firm. I only ask you because I feel as though you have, you have high quality have qualifications to rule on this matter. Are those women the A-team? I don't even think they're the F-team. I mean, I don't even know how to begin with that. I mean, he, he, he's, those are, they're so far, so far below the level of qualifications needed to handle a serious investigation that I, I, you can't even take it seriously. And to Carol's question, is it, do you either know or suspect that Donald Trump has some hidden cache of fantastic high-end lawyers who are like, these are the ones he puts out in public, puts on TV, so he'll, they'll seem like he's fighting. But he's got the real ones in the back somewhere, the well-paid, well-compensated, fat and happy. You mean hiding behind the boxes of documents in the basement of mar a 